I was browsing through Archive the other day and this paper caught my attention. It's using reinforcement learning for optimal regime switching. And so I thought I'd try and implement it and apply the methodology to an example trading strategy. So the setup is thus. I'm going to be doing pairs trading or, or that's what I'm going to be investigating. And I'm going to assume that the spread between Bitcoin and ETH is mean reverting. That is on the timescales I'm trading, if the Bitcoin ETH ratio goes too high, I'm expecting it to mean revert and come back down. That's the strategy that we're looking at. And then within this strategy, I can be in one of three possible modes or regimes. I can be long Bitcoin, short ETH. I can be long ETH, short Bitcoin, and I can be all cash. So those are the three different regimes or options. And now the question is, how do I decide when to flip between those different options? How do I choose when to enter each of those regimes? How, how to change between them? Well, we have some naive approaches, which you might think of. For example, here, I've just picked a train test split. And then from the training data, I'm labeling one standard deviation and two standard deviations above the mean. And then we could derive some sort of trading rule from that. So if it's above the one standard deviation, we go short. And if it's below here, then we go long, etc. That's all well and good, but it feels a bit arbitrary, at least in this way. I'm just picking some random thresholds by hand. Now we could then do some sort of back test and pick the thresholds that have the best possible returns on that training split and then apply it to the test split. But this is very much prone to overfitting you're finding an optimal solution on a very specific set of data that's not guaranteed to generalize to the future so if we carried on walking this forward it probably wouldn't be too profitable so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and use the results from this paper to derive some trading rules about when to change regime i.e when to flip long to short by modeling the bitcoin eth spread based on the actual data and applying reinforcement learning so the function that we're actually learning the thing that we're trying to estimate using reinforcement learning is this thing called the value function and the point of this value function is that for whatever combination of state regime and time that you pass it it will estimate your total profit or the total reward that the reinforcement learning system receives if you start in that state and you make optimal choices until the end that's the idea of the value function you can plot it down here so as we can see I'm assuming this is a mean reverting process. So the system is learning that when we're several standard deviations above the mean, in those situations, the value of being short, the value of being in the short regime is much higher than the value of being long. And you can see equally on the other side, when we're several standard deviations below the mean threshold it's much more beneficial or at least our function is telling us that the estimated value is much higher by being in the long regime than being in the short regime now the cool thing about this paper is that the system also takes into account switching costs because again while it's somewhat obvious that in a mean reverting process you want to be short when we're way above the mean and you want to be long when we're way below the mean. If we add fees into the mixture, given that we have to reverse our positions, it's less clear about where exactly those thresholds need to be now. But what this does is it gives us a very clear value function that we can use such that whenever the gap between the two lines here exceeds the amount that you would pay in fees to switch regimes, the model then predicts that it is in fact profitable to do so. And from there, we can extract trading rules by again, looking at something like this transition matrix, which says that going from long to short, we're going to encounter twice the fee that we would pay going from long to flat because we have to reverse both positions. Using that, we can then derive particular thresholds for when to go long, when to go short, 
and when to do absolutely nothing like where's a dead zone where we're not actually doing anything because the system like i said earlier has learned that for example here the gap between the predicted future value that you would earn is not big enough to justify your switching costs but over here it might be now the way that we get this function to learn is we simply assert that it should be self-consistent. So we're going to feed in a bunch of data, a bunch of time series data labeled with regimes, whether it's long or short at that particular moment. And we're going to give it a reward based on the time and the current regime that it's in. This is a reward function that you create yourself to model your particular problem. So for pairs trading, I chose a reward function that penalized it if it was trading in opposition to one of our assumptions. So if it was long and the spread is very negative, that would give it a positive reward as we expect it to mean revert back up. So at each unit time, it's collecting some reward depending on how you model things. So all we do is we demand that this value function be consistent with itself because it's trying to predict how much total reward you're going to collect in the future based on optimal switching. So we demand that as we advance one time step here and go from state X to X dash, all we do is demand that the value at this point in time is equal to the value at this point in time plus the reward we got for sitting in regime I for that time step. And then we do the same thing if there happened to be a regime change. So if we changed from state I to state J over that time period, we do the exact same thing, but we just minus the switching costs. And so we're teaching it effectively to predict one step in the future, what the expected reward is. And then if you chain this together over and over again, so it can predict the next step and the next step and the next step, you ideally get a function which can from time equals zero or any other time period, predict your exact optimal switching thresholds depending on how much time you have left. And so whatever difference there might be between these two values, because they're certainly not going to be equal when we start training the program, whatever the difference is between these, that gets used as the loss function for training the algorithm and learning this particular value. So over time, the reinforcement learning network learns to minimize the differences between these and thus give us this property that we're after, where it can predict the total future reward as many steps in the future as we want it to. And as long as we obey the mathematical assumptions given to us in the paper, everything converges and it's all actually calculating the optimal value function. And so once we've got that, we can extract our thresholds, we can run back tests on that so in this case it's long below this line and short above it and in between we do absolutely nothing so we continue to hold this short position and so to go into a little bit more detail about how this works what we do to train this model is we actually model the price data that we're using so we're not actually just feeding in random chunks of market data because that doesn't have the same theoretical guarantees that the paper gives us we have to live in model world. We have to make certain assumptions in order to actually use the algorithms in the paper and be sure we're doing the right thing. So there are a whole bunch of restrictions on what kind of data you can use, but one of them that's quite well behaved is an ornstein uhlenbeck process. So basically just mean reverting Brownian motion. So it just goes up and down and up and down but it always comes back to the mean. So I'm, in this case, pairs trading Bitcoin ETH. So I already believe that they're actually exhibiting this kind of pattern and therefore fitting the data to this kind of equation goes along with my already existing assumption that they do actually mean revert. And so what we do is we take this model, we fit it to our data. So it has certain parameters associated with it. How quickly does it mean revert? How strong is the Brownian motion, et cetera, et cetera. And so we take segments of actual market data. We fit the model to this data such that it tries to capture some of the properties. And then what we do is we simulate thousands and thousands of possible trajectories and we assign sample regimes to them using the value function. So the value function itself is used to calculate the probability that at any particular time, 
one of these simulated paths will change regime from long to short to flat, etc. And initially, this is just going to be completely random. But of course, as the system learns and gets more accurate in its future value predictions, these probabilities are going to get more and more accurate and more and more optimal as far as when is actually the best time to switch. So we start off, this is just going to be all random. We run all of the batches through the network. We do our gradient descent with the loss function that I showed you before. So we try to minimize this difference here. And then we simulate some more data, we repeat the whole process as many times as we want. And in the end, that will give us a value graph that looks a bit like this one from where we can derive thresholds about where it is and is not worth switching regimes based on the distance between these curves. Now, the model provided in the paper is quite general. You can apply it to many different sorts of trading strategies. So they've got some kind of contrived example here, and they've got an example down here where the system has to choose between going short on certain stocks or buying puts and between holding cash. So by tweaking those reward functions that I talked about and the model that you use for the actual data itself, by tweaking those within the theoretical parameters of the actual paper itself, you can model a whole bunch of different strategies. So you could do some fancier version of the options trading strategy that they had. I just applied it to pairs trading because I thought it'd be fun. I've also implemented their examples within the repo, which you can find in the description below. So there's this example, the bounded regulator example, and the put option, which you can see this graph looks very similar to the one I just showed you from the paper. All of the code is available on GitHub should you want to do a deep dive and play around with this for yourself or apply it to one of your trading strategies. And if you find any similar papers or anything you think I might be interested in them, you can find my email on the about page of my channel. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was useful for you and I'll see you in the next one.